Hey guys, welcome back to a new weekly reading vlog and this one is going to be a little bit different. So I have been teasing you guys with an unhaul project for 2021 for quite some time and I haven't got around to actually doing anything about that yet. Now as someone who does not only weekly reading vlogs but also has a strict monthly TBR, like a TBR game, it's difficult to introduce like new things and new series to my channel that involves actually reading quite a lot of things. I mean to be fair any new series that I want to start does involve reading like a significant number of books to be able to make the videos. I've been teasing this for a while and I felt like the best way to do this unhaul project was through vlogs. So my aim is to bring you one of these a month. That is not always going to be feasible because some months I'm just not going to be able to add so many books into my TBR to make an installment of this video. But this is pretty much going to serve two purposes. It is no secret that I am a big fan of secondhand book shopping and I've mentioned this before but I I grew up quite poor. So I spent all of my childhood going to the library, borrowing books and reading them, which I absolutely adored. Like going to the library was one of my favorite things. And then as I got a little bit older, my family got like slightly better off. But the thing about when you start off poor, when you get a little bit of money, you never want to spend it. Like you don't want to spend the money because you don't ever want to be in the position that you were in. So I did get the chance to start buying books then, but it was all charity shopping and charity shopping is something else that I absolutely adore. I love going into all of the charity shops in a city and just getting a massive book haul. It feels so good and it feels so much more special because you only have like say 100 books per shop to choose from and finding a gem is the best feeling. Now I am much more fortunate now. I'm more financially stable so essentially if I would like to buy a book, if there's a specific book that I want then I can buy that. So as my shelves are evolving, the majority of the things I have on them are books that I'm really excited to read and ones that I really want to read and that I bought intentionally but I still have tons of the books that I bought when I was secondhand shopping all the time and when you're doing that you'll pick up things that you maybe wouldn't buy if you were buying the full price. If you want to read a book you only have this certain amount to choose from. So I have a TBR car over there. The bottom of the car is full of the books that are going to be for this unhaul project. Most of them are things like maybe contemporaries or thrillers that I would read and unhaul afterwards because I personally don't see value in keeping books like that because once I've read them they've served their purpose at the time that I'm reading them and it's highly unlikely that they'll become my new favorite because they're not my typical genre and they're not the kind of books that I would ever reach for to reread. As well as those there are other books that I have things for example like a few subscription box books that I've received that aren't particularly to my taste. I don't think I'm gonna love them but for now the unhaul car is the older stuff like the secondhand stuff the stuff that i've picked up on a whim and that is the first purpose of this video to read these books and unhaul them if i don't want them because with the contemporaries and the thrillers especially i do still really want to read them it's just i know that they're not likely to be kept after the fact we then have like a second purpose to this vlog and a second type of book really that's on the tbr car and those are books that i've picked up because i sounded interested in them like once again second hand but there's an element in them that I'm not sure I'm gonna love or since I got them I've heard really bad reviews that have put me off them so the second purpose of this video or this video series is going to be a little bit of a taste test like these books that I'm putting off because I just don't think I'm gonna be into them am I actually going to be into them when I read them because while the main thing that we're trying to do here is clear through this backlog of books that I've got and get them unhauled that comes with the assumption that I'm not going to like them or I'm going to want to unhaul them they're not going to be a new favorite but there is always the chance that I'm going to find something that I will absolutely adore. So throughout this series I imagine we're going to be like pushing the boundaries of not necessarily my taste but what I think my taste is. It may open me up to new genres and subgenres that I previously didn't think I was interested in and we may find I think we're definitely going to find at least a few hidden gems throughout this project but who knows how many of them there's actually going to be. It could turn out that that I just know my taste really well and all of the books that have an element that I thought I wasn't gonna like it turns out I don't like them but this week I'm going to be reading books exclusively for this project I don't know what all of the books I'm going to be reading are yet but the first one we're going to be starting with is Suicide Club by Rachel Heng 
this was on my February Bacopoli TBR and it was Curtis pick and I intentionally left it so that I had started it at the end of February so I didn't have to take a punishment but so that it would go into this week so that I could make this video so I'm only 24 pages into this and this is a literary dystopian and I love dystopian but you guys know that I actively avoid literary fiction so I'm really interested to see how this one's going to play out it takes place in a society where you have the potential to live for many hundreds of years providing that you're healthy and you do everything correctly so like you don't eat meat don't eat sugar exercise regularly and follow this perfect lifestyle and the main character is 100 years old and she is a lifer which is one of those people who can live for a very long time however when she has a near-death experience she comes into contact with an organization of people who don't like the lifer lifestyle they believe that if you're living within this set of constraints and you can't break out of it like you can't have a piece of chocolate then you're not really living so I can't say much about it so far I'm 24 pages into it I am already enjoying it more than I anticipated I would the ratings on this are really low on Goodreads it has like a 3.24 average rating I think which again reinforced my beliefs that I wouldn't love it but if this book is aimed at a literary fiction audience and people who read a lot of literary fiction are the people who are making up the bulk of the reviews I'm not a literary fiction reader and I am a dystopian reader so I may really enjoy this one so yeah welcome to the first installment of the Unhole Project slash Unhole series and I'll let you know how I feel about this when I'm a little bit more of the way through it Saturdays back in 05 Flip flops with the socks high My dad was driving me down to the diamond Backseat and I thought I Was gonna make it big time Good morning. Today I missed a delivery of my fairy loot, which is very upsetting, but something that made up for it is this enormous box that I received. So I kind of know what this is. I don't know the specifics of it, but I know like where it's come from, etc. But I didn't think it would be this huge. I thought it would maybe be like yay big. But this is a promotional box from a small UK based black women led independent publisher called Ennui and they reached out to me and asked if I would like to receive a promotional box for one of their new releases. The book in here I can't remember exactly what it's called but I think it's like a young girl fantasy and it has something to do with dreams and it's released in April but I'm really excited to crack this open because it has some weight to it as well as being massive. I'm interested to see if there's like a ton of packing in here as well just because of how large it is but just generally this is really exciting because I've never received like a promotional pack from a publisher before oh wow okay so there is quite a bit of packing in here but look at this oh it smells good I, I know that there's some like is the bath products in here it has self-care items I know that but look at this box it reminds me of like a special edition record box that I don't want to open it because it's tied with a bow and it's really pretty okay let's let's have a look okay let's have a look Ooh. oh this is more beautiful than I could ever have imagined why <gasps> The little thing is wax sealed. I don't know if this is normal for promotional boxes, but like I said, I never had one before. So I'm just amazed. Okay. The little thing that's up on the lid says, made with love. This box was made with love by the Ennui team. We are so passionate about Dream Country, a story that made us gasp, cry, and lose ourselves completely in a world like no other. We believe this book deserves to be read by all who love it. For this, we need your help. We ask that you share this experience with the world, and we thank you for your invaluable support with love, the team Ennui. God, it's beautiful. I'm so happy. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got in here. I don't want to open this right now, but I feel like I should. How do I do it so that I don't break the wax seal? Is the question. I would rather tear the letter in half than break the wax seal at this point. Dear reader, dream is an all-encompassing word. It can mean fancy or it can mean reality. It can mean desire and it can mean, um, mean ambition. Growing up, my dream was to create a world full of stories where impossible things happened every day. But I also wanted to create a world that was a reflection of the one we are living in. In our world, families and cultures are constantly divided by imaginary borders we call countries and histories and the stories that were once carried by these families and cultures are lost, changed and divided again. With my ever-deepening 
and love and learning of these stories that were once united I have written this book. I hope that Dream Country reminds everyone who reads it of their own dreams. I hope it reminds you that the things standing in your way and working to divide you are often not as real as they claim to be and if nothing else I hope this story allows you to join me in my dream for a while. Okay so on top we have a print that is something in this box is extremely glittery and it's put glitter everywhere but first off we have this really pretty print and then another large item in here is a 12 week is this a 12 week oh oh this says doing from dreams to reality and it is a 12 week journal that will change everything and it's my kind of journal guys because it's an undated three month daily planner and you guys know i've just transitioned to a daily planner um and it's changed my life i love it but it has like uh positivity things and as well like mood trackers water and sleep trackers so it's a mix between like productivity and wellness i'm gonna take the book out and then in the bottom here we have lots of exciting glittery things maybe there's just glitter in the box maybe that's it so in oh this is squishy it's got like a lump and some squish dried lavender. Sleep is as important to your physical and mental health as food and water and many cultures across the world treat it as such. Many societies have developed bespoke rituals and practice for the sacred time of rest. In Scandinavian countries parents often leave their babies outdoors to nap and even in the middle of winter parents believe the fresh air is good for their kids and that being stuck inside will help keep young children from getting sick. This is interesting so we have the lavender in here which is under the field category on this card we also have a little eye mask which says doze just gonna yeah that's how we're doing the rest of this oh and a bottle of pillow mist let me smell this oh that smells good lavender chamomile violet clove and rose so you spray this on your pillow to help promote like a more relaxing environment and a relaxing sleep but this box is amazing i'm gonna take this off just so i can put it back in the bag that it belongs in and don't lose it I like it has lots of like fluffy stuff in packaging like clouds which is really cool oh we have more glitter in the bottom we have gold glitter in the bottom this is just glitter glitter central so this one oh i didn't realize this one says sleep this one says nightmares nightmares are widely believed to be your brain's way of working through a very particular problem people who experience trauma tend to have more nightmares can relate as distressing as this can be it might also be your brain's way of processing what happened in fact some scientists view nightmares could act as a form of exposure therapy by gradually exposing someone to their deepest fears say dogs or spiders in a safe setting this kind of therapy slowly learns to manage their phobia for psychiatrists this is generally considered the gold standard for treating phobias and ptsd related conditions very interesting so in this one we have this one is full and this one is a moon lamp keychain it says studies show that you're more likely to have strange dreams and nightmares during a full moon theories range from altered sleep inducing hormone production to evolutionary advantages of being alert during bright and light this is just real informative as well which i'm appreciating this one we also have this one release Ooh, mm. and these are bath salts hawaiian black lava sea salt rose petals and lavender flowers let me smell them let them smell them oh they're in a cool little glass jar look at these beauties peacock them i just want to sniff everything mm. Mm. oh my god yeah that smells like your typical aromatherapy like sleepy bath salt and then the last thing in this pouch still have another pouch to go oh wow so the last thing in this one is myth and these are brazilian mythological beast cards which just generally really cool oh the art on these is really pretty so we have the i think that's the the Besta Ferra, the Capilobo, my pronunciation is gonna be awful, the lo 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 Lobisomem, Boitata, and the Kuka. These are really pretty and also just like cool mythical beast things. I'm having a grand old time. A grand old time. Still got one more bag in here, which is covered in cold glitter and it's dreams look how sparkly that is wow can i just shake some of the glitter off i'm used to the glitter life because of candles okay so in dreams we have <gasps> i need one of these i need one of these yes why am i so excited this isn't even the thing i think this just goes with the thing a candle very exciting can i wear my scissors i've lost i've buried all of my belongings under all of this stuff but this is a lavender chamomile violet sandalwood and palo santo candle smells good it smells bougie and i have just accidentally like carved a little slice in it with the scissors but that's 
fine. And for the candle, it says Zion, packed with scents that can help rewire your brain and leave it prime for sleep and lucid dreams. And the final item in the dreams bag, is it tea? It's tea. I hope this is lavender tea because I love lavender tea. I don't love the smell of lavender, but drinking lavender, I am obsessed. It has some lavender in it. It's lemon balm, rose petals, peppermint, lavender flower, and passion flower. And of course, we have the little tea strainer in here as well because it's loose leaf tea. Oh, this smells good. This is such a nice box. I'm honestly just like blown away. Um, so that was the dreams bag. We have two things left, one of which is the book. The first is this little roll of parchment that's tied with lavender. I'm gonna frame these. These are stunning. This is a map I'm assuming that is from the book and I love this like thin parchment paper and then in the other one we have a diagram of something to do with the world is this like a dream kingdom that's above the world but we have a diagram of that as well so much thought has gone into this box and I'm honestly shook and then finally the book which is dream country by Ashe Brown this is a limited edition proof very exciting and this just says a sibling rivalry to fuel your worst nightmares triplets gods of sleep dreams and nightmares suspects in their own mother's murder separated by deadly gates of horn and ivory but what happens when the gates collapse oh my god okay so this actually sounds real interesting as well oh <laughs> I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. But honestly, thank you so much to Ennui for sending me this box because like so much work has gone into this. When I received an email about this and I accepted and was like, yes, I would love a box. I thought it would literally be just like this big with a couple of little things in, but this is jam packed with amazing things. So thank you so much. And I am going to be reading this in April ahead of its release, which I think is the 27th of April. Does it say on here? It just says April, 2021, but I'm pretty sure that the email said like the 27th and on the inside cover here as well it says the dysfunctional triplet gods of sleep dreams and nightmares are kept separate by the deadly gates of horn and ivory only one fact keeps them tightly bound each of them is a suspect in their mother's murder their knife edge feud worsens when a mortal enters the world with the stoning abilities that threaten to change the game for them all in this thrilling young adult fantasy a shade brown brings to life a visionary world infused with kenyan brazilian jamaican and grecian cultural references a story like no other with stakes as high as they come and where is that print gone this is the cover of the final copy of the book so um yeah thank you so much to Onwe. real excited about this and excited to use some of these goodies also real excited about that tea strainer because i have quite a bit of loose leaf tea and the tea strainer that i have is just not good so in terms of my reading i am still currently reading suicide club i'm actually well i say i'm nearly done i'm like two thirds of the way through i'm on page two 244 and I'm actually really enjoying this. I think as somebody who reads a lot of fantasy, a lot of series continuations and tends to go into books like knowing what to expect and like what I'm going to get from whatever book I'm reading. This is really refreshing. It's a really good change of pace. Um, the writing style is not as I expected for something that's penned as like literary dystopian, but it is definitely very readable, very compelling. The chapters are kind of short and I am flying through this when I am actually picking it up. I didn't get a lot of time to read last night. I'm doing Patreon sprints again tonight, so I think I am going to finish this. So this follows a young woman and in this society, you have a DNA test or a genetics test as soon as you're born and that will let people know whether you have the potential to live forever whether your genes are strong enough now it is a little bit confusing because there's a lot going on here but there is a lot of like medical technological advancements in here and what they will do is they will replace parts of your body so like smart blood is one mentioned and diamond skin you can also have like a synthetic like metal heart to replace your heart and like your organs and stuff can all be replaced and essentially they've been rolling these things out in waves and it is almost time for the third wave program so the first wave allowed people to live up until around 150 the second wave made it so that like 150 was about your minimum and the third wave is going to be near immortality and the main character wants to make sure that she's eligible for this third wave program however one day when she is on her way to work she sees her father and she hasn't seen her father in around 88 years something happened in the past and her parents split up and he pretty much disappeared he didn't believe in all of this stuff and didn't feel like 
like it was living thought that like putting your life into these strict regulations that were stipulated you had to follow to live the longest things like sealing your window shut and having like the perfectly controlled environment a lot of the people in here don't eat real food anymore nobody eats meat to start off with but they've moved over to something called nutri packs which are just like sludge with nutrients and vitamins and stuff in and he didn't believe in this so he was branded anti-sanct and left the city and the main character sees him for the first time after all this time and she can't get to him she's gonna lose him in the crowd so she steps in front of a moving car accidentally because she's trying to cross the road to get to him because of this she's put on an observation list which means that people are watching her kind of analyzing her every move analyzing the clothes that she's wearing every day because they don't believe that she is now following this program and they are trying to get her back onto the right path even though like she didn't want to die when she stepped in front of a car so it has this like government is always watching you kind of feeling as well and I am finding it thoroughly enjoyable there are some elements that I wish were delved into a little bit more in some ways it kind of feels like a prequel to Scythe because they're trying to achieve this goal where nobody ever dies and obviously in Scythe the whole plot of Scythe is that no one ever dies like it's literally impossible to die so in those regards it does feel like a prequel to Scythe but one thing I will say about this and I'm not sure whether it's intentional or whether it's me but this book makes me incredibly anxious now backstory on why I think it might just be me. A couple of years ago now, I think it was the end of 2019, I went through a period with my anxiety where I couldn't read anything remotely gory and like trigger warnings for like anxi anxiety stuff if any of you guys may be affected by me talking about it right here. But my thing is that I get quite squeamish and my fingernails and my toenails start to tingle like the beds of my nails and then my teeth can start to tingle when it gets really bad and I have to like curl my fingers and my toes um, to, I don't know, like relieve the feeling, I guess. Um, and with my nails, I do this. I push my nails into like the nail bed or like the under nail bit, which is hard for me to do when I have acrylic nails. And having acrylic nails is something that actually stopped me from doing the constant pushing because the nails are too thick to like give me the feeling that I desire. Complete segue, but like that eased off a couple of years ago and this feeling is something that I've always had. But normally if I'm watching something extremely gory at the point at the end of 2019 it got to a point where like the slightest mention like in a fantasy book somebody would get stabbed it wouldn't even be in detail and like I'd start tingling or I'd just be sat doing nothing and I'd get my like anxious tingly feeling so this book is triggering that a lot and I do feel like it's intentional in part because this is a society where people are terrified of dying and it kind of feeds into stuff that we are seeing in the world like anti-obesity stuff because obesity causes diabetes don't smoke because it gives you cancer but like a really extreme version and the reason why my anxiety was manifesting so much in 2019 is not health anxiety necessarily it is an extreme fear of death and also things kind of being outside of my control and something like death, like my own mortality is something that I had to be confronted with and is now something that I still haven't recovered from this whole thing that was going on because it does, it was caused by a specific event. But things being outside of my control and just seeming so overwhelming is what kind of caused my anxiety and this is people being obsessed about the tiniest things like you can't eat meat at all because that will make your life shorter. You can't jog because because jogging will cause like micro tears in your joints and your muscles. So yeah, it's having, I think, I feel like it's having this desired effect because I'm supposed to be unsettled by what's going on. But in a little bit of a more extreme case with me because it is triggering me a little bit. That being said, I can still read it. It is just, um, yeah, it's triggering. It's triggering me a little bit, but I am really enjoying this, which I'm surprised about. So I'm hoping to finish this in the Patreon sprints tonight and then I'll come back and I'll let you guys know what I think and move on to to my second book for this video. Some of you guys will have seen on Twitter as well that Curtis is currently reading Akatar. That's not video related, he's not doing it for a video. I am gonna try and convince him to make a video with me regarding him reading Akatar, but we'll see how that goes because um, he doesn't love making videos with me. But yeah, if any of you guys thought that I was making him read it for a specific video project, I'm not. He started reading it in 2017 and then kind of put it down and didn't read a book again until the beginning of this year where he's been going through some of the books that he started and is now continuing on with Akatar because he was like I think 40 50 
deep pages into it. So that's what's happening with that. If I can get him to make a video with me, I will. But that was not the intended reason for him reading Akata. So I'm gonna go because I spent a lot of time unboxing that box and then letting you know my thoughts. And I do need to film my wrap up today. That is the main thing I'm doing today, filming my wrap up and editing that. And now it is like quarter past 12 and I haven't even started filming. Hey, so I'm currently still doing sprints. There's like nine minutes of the final sprint left, but I've just finished Suicide Club, put it into my spreadsheet and everything. And it came out at four stars, but only just four stars. If it had been rated like one point lower on any of the elements, it would have come out at three. And I did enjoy this. Enjoyment wise, I would say it's definitely a three stars, but I was definitely very intrigued. I also found it really compelling and had no problem like flying through this. I will say at a couple of points, like it was meandering a little bit and I just wasn't completely interested. And you know, I didn't love it just because it's not my kind of story. I do think it was nice. I say nice. It wasn't but like the characters journeys came to kind of a nice resolution towards the end of it and it was all like cleared up and it was a little bit emotional and things like that so yeah four stars but it's not saving it from the unhaul pile i will definitely be unhauling this but i'm glad that i read it and i'm now a little bit less scared of literary dystopian because i went into this thinking it was going to be like really pretentious and i don't think it is so maybe this is curing me of my fear of literary fiction well wow. That would be an interesting outcome. I really just don't have too much to say about it aside from those things. Um, definite trigger warnings for suicide. This is all about life and also like what do you do when society tells you that you can't die but you're done with life like you've lived over a hundred years and you're done there's no need for you to be around and you don't feel like following all of these guidelines is really living but then also coming to terms with your death because like dying, dying is scary. Like I'm fucking terrified of it. I don't know how to trigger one in this because the things that I was talking about before is definitely like my own specific form of anxiety and I don't know what the trigger or content warnings for that would be. I would say health anxiety, fear of death. Like if any of those things are things that you struggle with, have issues with, be careful reading this because as I mentioned, I did find it triggering in those elements, but not enough that I couldn't read it. But then I know that these things make me feel some type of way to start off with. So now that I've finished that, I am going to be moving on to The Midnight Queen. I don't know if I'm starting it tonight. It depends how long me and Jay chat after this live show. But this one is on my March Book or Please TBR. And I believe it's in for the prompt other, which is just anything that isn't fantasy, sci-fi, romance or contemporary. And this is slightly fantasy, but I do believe that mainly it is historical. And I had no idea how much fantasy would be in here. But I have just received a comment on my TBR literally like 10 minutes ago that says that this book kind of reads like a period drama kind of like reading Pride and Prejudice or something similar and it has a really slow burn romance and I'm incredibly nervous <laughs> going into this one because you guys know that I don't get on with historical stuff and I will say I have been watching Bridgerton and I'm enjoying Bridgerton and that has made me want to maybe try reading historical romance so maybe this will scratch that itch even though it isn't like historical romance as a genre but this follows a guy who has been banished I think he's a scholar yeah he's been disgraced and banished to his tutor's home where he meets the professor's daughter and she would very much like to study magic however she has been forbidden from doing it by her her father but also secretly researching magical studies in her father's library so that is pretty much all the synopsis says it is kind of vague I don't feel like I'm getting a good picture of what I'm going into with reading this book which is why it's taking me so long to pick it up and why it is also in this unhaul project this is also one of my books that will self-destruct in 12 months and the whole reason I put this on my TBR is because that is going to be running out in about two weeks and of all the books that are on there this is the one that I would most like to at least give a go before it does self-destruct before it does self-destruct and I have to unhaul it so I'm hoping to get at least a chapter of this done before I go to bed but um oh gosh oh the text the text is small in this one guys wow okay but yeah I'm hoping to at least read a chapter before bed if not I will be starting this tomorrow and fingers crossed I like it because since I refreshed myself with the synopsis to put this on my TBR and because I've been watching Bridgerton I'm actually much more excited to read this and interested to see what it's like than I would be at any other time it's just circles in my head I've been running after something I know money couldn't help 
Always starving for my purpose Maybe I ain't found it yet Honest questions with my mother All these things you think you want Will they ever be enough? Looking for the answers where they used to be At the center of it all for everyone to see If I lose all the attention and I own nothing It's just her and me on a bench in the street With Dolly underneath, that would be enough for me Yo ho ho! And a bottle of rum. I look really weird because I'm wearing like a slight bit of makeup but my hair's wet. But yesterday I started The Midnight Queen by Sylvia Hunter and I really struggled. I read the prologue and the chapter just normally and I was struggling with the writing style in this to start off with. It is very, I want to say very historical but I don't think it centers any like real historical events. It's just kind of like written in a historical style and because I don't love historical stuff I don't read a ton of historical fiction. I wasn't really gelling with it but I was doing Patreon sprints with Ashley, Gavin, Steph and Jade last night and I've been feeling anxious and when I'm anxious I kind of get like brain fog. I can't concentrate, I can't sit still, like I've been cooking full blown meals every night because I just have the urge to do things and be up and not sat still. So I tried to read this physically at the start of the sprint. So I read like a page and was like I just can't do it. So I got the audiobook for this and got a puzzle out and the puzzle was occupying my mind so that I could actually um sit still instead of just like constantly being on edge and moving all the time. And I got to page 128 of this and then I've also read like half of the next chapter and just not moved my bookmark because I've been listening to the audio. And sad to say this is going to be another DNF. I DNF'd a book last week. I'm DNFing a book this week and who am I? I do think that because I've been anxious <laughs> that is making me a little bit more ruthless with my books. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I just can't get behind the writing style as a star and then I found that by the time I'd gotten used to the writing style and could actually pay attention and listen and process the story, I kind of missed the beginning of the book while I was trying to adjust to the writing style and I just, I, st I, I don't know what the main conflict in this book is. Like the main character Grey is trying to do something because of something that happened in those early chapters when my brain was just scattered and all over the place. So I just, I can't focus on it right now. One, because of anxiety, two, because of the writing style and nothing much happened in the hundred pages that I read. Not a huge fan of the characters or anything. I don't even like them that much. So I do think that this book is just not for me. It's too historical and Kayla who commented on my TBR, yeah you're right it reads like a period drama but the romance doesn't even exist a hundred pages in. It's kind of like just they're not really doing much so it's yeah it's not for me. It's not for me. I'm sad about it because there's not even a solid reason why I'm DNF in this. I just don't want to read it so I'm not doing it. Look at me. This is character development. This is personal growth. I'm going through a thing right now and I'm DNF in books and I, you know what actually I can't even say it feels particularly good to DNF books. Although I am relieving like slight pressure off myself because this was a Bacopoli book for the prompt other and I've got rid of that now. So I don't have anything else on my Bacopoli TBR that would fit for this unhaul project. So I've been to my unhaul cart and I'm in the mood for a thriller and we only have three days of this week left and then I will have to get back onto my normal TBR. So I picked like a, I want to say like a middle of the road one actually. It's under 400 pages but this is All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker and I think when I was reading Suicide Club something that I really enjoyed about that book is that it's not my usual and I was really into it because it is different from what I normally read. So I think I'm going to get the same vibes from this and I have actually read a thriller from Wendy Walker before. I read Emma in the Night and really loved it. So I am actually in the mood for this one. The only reason this is in my own whole project is because I personally don't see the point in rereading thrillers. Once I've read them I've been thrilled. I know the plot twist and I'm done. So I don't remember what this one is about at all. So I'm just going to refresh my memory. So it says since the night she was attacked Jenny Kramer hasn't been able to recall what happened. Her parents and the doctors saw to that. Her mother couldn't prevent the terror in the woods but she's done all she can to stop it ruining Jenny's life. The only thing that now bothers Jenny is the scar carved into her lower back which she can't stop touching. But if Jenny can't remember her attacker he can't be caught. He could be standing next to her right now the one who just caught her eye and he hasn't forgotten anything. Yeah I read a synopsis on script because I checked to 
to see if there was an audiobook available for this because fantasy audiobooks I just can't do. I do actually enjoy listening to thriller and contemporary audiobooks. I don't think I'm going to do the whole of this in audiobook. It's available on script but I did start a 1000 <laughs> piece jigsaw last night and I'm probably like 100 to 200 pieces of the way through it and I don't want to have it sat there for years because to do this jigsaw I dismantled one that I started in like November December 2017 and I don't want that to happen again so I do plan on finishing that jigsaw and I'm going to be listening to the audiobook while I do the jigsaw and then when I'm not jigsawing I will read this physically and I hope I really enjoy it. I loved Emma in the Night so I know that I like this author but I feel like thrillers are always hit and miss even if you really like the author you may just not like one of the books that they've written. So I have a live show tonight for The Mass Fallen by Samantha Shannon as part of Bone Thorn, which is on Ashley's channel but I have an hour and 20 minutes until that happens so I'm actually gonna go do some of my jigsaw and start the audiobook for this one and I don't think I'm going to be DNF in this one so at least I am actually going to read it. Thrillers are generally quite fast paced and compelling as well like they're supposed to be page turners so I don't think it's going to take me too long to this one and I'm really excited because I think I'm actually going to enjoy reading something that is completely outside of my usual right now. 25 on the outside with dark bags under bright eyes Maybe I'm tired cause my expectations are too high The truth is, right now, I've got everything I need But it's never been my nature to accept complacency It's just circles in my head I'm still running after something I know money cannot help Always starving for more purpose Maybe it's right here instead Honest questions with my lover All these things I think I want Will they ever be enough? Looking for the answers where they used to be At the center of it all for everyone to see If I lose all the attention And I own nothing It's just her and me on a bench in the street With Dolly underneath That would be enough for me Hey! So it is Sunday morning and today I'm having a chill day. I say I'm having a chill day. My idea of a chill day is probably really weird to some people, but basically I don't do a whole ton of stuff around the house during the week because I'm real busy throughout the day. So my chill day is gonna consist of doing as many loads of laundry as possible whilst also listening to an audiobook and trying to finish my jigsaw. So today we wash and dry until we die. I wanted to fill you in on where I'm at because I this is a kind of themed vlog, so I want this book done today. I've been socializing too much, honestly. I've been spending a lot of time on live shows, a lot of time talking to my friends after live shows, and I've not read very much at all. So I'm on page 95 of this. The audiobook says I have about eight and a half hours left, but I'm listening to it on 1.8 times speed. And if you know me, you know that I usually don't go past 1.4, but 1.8 isn't even fast because this guy talks so slow. So we're on 1.8 speed with this one. And I'm enjoying it, but I'm also finding it deeply disturbing. So when I read the synopsis of the back of this we found out that there was a girl attacked and she doesn't remember anything about it so i that's the only context i had for this but straight from the first page you find out that this girl was raped so big huge trigger warnings for rape in this book also trigger warnings for self-harm and like suicidal thoughts but this book is told from the perspective of a male character i'm not going to tell you who it is because i know who it is now but it's only revealed like just a little bit of the way into the book so i wouldn't say it's necessarily a spoiler but it is a thriller so I personally prefer to go into them quite blind but it's about this girl being attacked and she went into shock during slash after the attack so she didn't remember much anyway but then her parents agreed to put her through this treatment to pretty much erase her memory so she's behaving in strange ways it's not actually strange but essentially to her like this thing didn't happen she has no memory of it at all but she still feels a kind of way because of it and it's the way that she's responding to these feelings that she's having some people want her to forget it ever happened want it to be as if it literally never happened and other people are trying to find out who did this because this is set in a small town where everyone knows everyone and it's very unusual for there to be strange people in the town but this is told from the perspective of a male character and it's a very let's say clinical description of everything but the first chapter of this is a very clinical graphic description of this girl being raped and it has that tone throughout of being like a clinical like emotions removed perspective of this entire event and story unfolding and it is very graphic and I would say that it is extremely triggering to anybody who would be sensitive to those topics. I'm 
fine with reading slash listening to this kind of thing but at the same time i would have appreciated knowing from the synopsis that we were dealing with rape here just so that i went into it prepared because it doesn't say how she's attacked and literally on the first page we go into this incredibly graphic description of this event happening so yeah a warning would have been nice and be aware of that going into this i'm gonna listen to my audiobook i'll show you my puzzle actually because i want to finish it today this is where we're at i don't even have i shown you guys the full picture at all this is the puzzle this is where we're at and as i've tried to listen to two fantasy audiobooks recently the secrets of the starcross and the midnight queen dnf them both and i mainly read fantasy i'm real sad because i've had a really chill week this week partially because i've spent my time doing this even though i've been like talking to friends and stuff which live shows are their own like particular brand of exhaustion but i've spent a lot of time working on my jigsaw while listening to my audiobook or talking to my friends and it's just chill you know i have a diamond painting on the way to me at some point so i'm gonna have that to do i just really wish i could listen to fantasy audiobooks but i can't and it is just like complete difference instantly between the two audiobooks i tried to listen to secrets of the starcrossed and the midnight queen and this one that i'm actually enjoying so maybe i'm gonna become a thriller bitch now because i can actually listen to these and work on something else at the same time <laughs> I hereby present to you a completed 1000 piece Lion King jigsaw puzzle. This took four days of my life. This was four days of my life pretty much in this puzzle and I can't lie, I kind of just want to start a new one immediately. So it's like 9.30 now, I think-ish and my jigsaw is complete but my book is not. I am nearly there though. I'm like so close to the end and I've listened to 230 pages of this so far today and I have just over 60 left. I don't know how much that is in audiobook time. Let's see how we're getting on. So I have an hour and 30 minutes left, but I am listening to it on 1.8 still. So it's probably about 50 minutes, but I am playing Fortnite with Curtis and Ryan at like 10. So yeah, I don't know what to do for the next 30 minutes. I guess I'll just listen to my audiobook because there's no point me setting up to do anything exciting in the next 30 minutes. And then after we've played Fortnite, I will listen to the last like 20 minutes that I'll have left of this. And then it's done. I can't believe that I've just like occupied myself for most of the day. I did three loads of laundry as well and um, made dinner. So it's not like I've been sat around doing absolutely nothing all day. I have still got shit done. But yeah, it's been a lazy Sunday, but like kind of productive. I'm feeling very accomplished. Good afternoon, guys. It's Monday now and I feel like a mashed potato. Um, I don't know whether I didn't sleep enough or whether I didn't sleep very well, but it's like 3.30 in the afternoon and I'm ready to get back in bed and have like a big old nap but I need to wrap up this vlog because I did finish All Is Not Forgotten last night but after I played Fortnite I think we finished at like half 12. I went to bed and listened to the last 20 minutes of this. So I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed this but it is incredibly dark and twisted. Like the plot twists in here are not even wild. It's just more like whoa that really went to a dark place but yeah if you like thrillers, would definitely recommend this, but please do heed the trigger warnings in here. The sexual assault, like graphic descriptions and everything in here is like way off the charts. It is super clinical, super graphic. The narrator for the story is a very biased character um, and a very, do I even want to say morally gray or is it just like extremely conflicted? Also not a nice person necessarily. They are a pretty unlikable narrator, but I just thoroughly really enjoyed listening to this like I was gripped from the first couple of chapters of this really enjoyed the audiobook will say that the narrator is extremely slow so you'll need to listen to it on like at least two times speed but yeah I loved it it was a thriller I was thrilled but it's still going on the unhaul pile because I will never reread it so in terms of this being the first video in the unhaul project very successful because all three books that I read this week I will be unhauling like I said at the beginning about hidden gems 
ones. The two of these books that I actually read and completed gave them both four stars. Really, really enjoyed them. But I was right in thinking that when I was done with them, they would serve no further purpose to me. They're not new favourites. They were very interesting, twisty, like slightly dark, enjoyable reads. Midnight Queen, we decided, was just not for me and that is going. Although I'm still sad they didn't like that because when I picked it up and reread the synopsis and stuff, I was really excited for it. Thought that I would really enjoy it, but I don't think that it was the kind of story I was expecting going into it. And then with all of the historical stuff, just like really just not for me. So that is three books down. <laughs> from the unhaul pile. Do let me know if you want me to make a tour video of my unhaul TBR car. I think I mentioned that earlier as well. And I will do that for you guys so you can see what kind of books are coming up in these videos. I do hope to bring you these vlogs at least once a month. But like I said, we will see how that goes. It's not always gonna be possible, but I'm feeling good after the first installment of this. It's crazy because I've been really excited to do this and I'm like yeah we're gonna feel real good we're gonna unhaul all these books clear all this space at this point when my collection has grown so large it's pretty much purely damage control <laughs> because I've already run out of space I mean I've got a stack of books here but I actually pulled these for the video that I filmed on Saturday these are not homeless books I just need to put them away I do have a stack here which is about the same size as this stack of books that have no homes but then the sad thing is as well is that the main of the books that I'm unhauling or trying to unhaul are all paperbacks and these stack here are all hardbacks because it's hardbacks that I just generally struggle to find space for anyway. This brings us to the end of this week's vlog. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have, please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I will see you guys next week. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you Go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no